So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I will be discussing, inshallah, the recitation of Fatiha behind the Imam. Now I'm not going to give you an answer that this is the way to do it or this is the correct opinion. I'm going to give you the different opinions and the dala'il, the proofs behind those opinions. Now these proofs are not exhaustive in nature. This is not like every single proof from the Maliki fiqh or from the Hanafi fiqh or from the Shafi or from the others. It is simply a, uh, a discussion about how Islamic law uh, has certain asuls, has certain principles and how they look at the text from different perspectives. Um, this, in the uh, in the academic world, you know, uh, is called hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is the study of the text. And how do you understand the text that you're looking at? So let us start by mentioning the most famous tradition of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that is la la salata illa bi fatiha. There's no prayers without fatiha. There's no prayers without reading Fatiha. So, La is a complete negation. There's no Salah except by reading Fatiha. So that means that you have to read Fatiha. So one of the opinions looking at the text is that you have to read Fatiha means you have to read Fatiha. Okay? So, la salata illa bi fatiha. So, the people that will take on to especially this hadith of the Prophet uh, will say that you have to read Fatiha in every raka'ah. Now, let's complicate this a little bit more. Uh, this is the opinion of Imam Malik, which I'm about to share with you. When the Quran is recited, you have to listen. You can't recite Quran, which means that if the Imam is reciting Quran, if the Imam is reciting Qur'an, you can't be reciting Qur'an because the Qur'an twice says, be quiet, don't say anything. وَإِذَا قُرِئَ Quran, When Qur'an is being recited, and Fatiha is itself called Qur'an al-Azim. Qur'an, the Fatiha is the great Qur'an, the great recitation. وَإِذَا قُرِئَ Quran, When the Qur'an is recited, فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ Listen to it, وَأَنصِتُوا And be quiet. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So that maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have rahma upon you. Now, <clears throat> so the opinion of Imam Malik is if the Imam is reciting Qur'an, you better stay quiet and pay attention to the qira of the Imam. And if you are alone, then you can read Fatiha. Uh, now, so this is two of the opinions we've covered. Okay, one is you have to read Fatiha in every raka'ah, whether you're behind the Imam or not. You have to read Fatiha. This is why maybe you have seen that after they finished the, uh, the Surah Al Fatiha, and then you hear people reciting Fatiha at that time. This is the opinion of Imam Shafi that between Fatiha and the Surah, you can recite Fatiha, and you see many people doing that. And then the other opinion is that when the uh, the Imam reads Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen The Muqtadi, the people behind the Imam will read Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen So the Imam should give that much space for the people to complete that And then he should read the next verse and the next verse And in this way, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ Quran, When the Quran is recited, be quiet and listen It can also be acted upon because the Imam is stopping Now you have space to recite, so you recite And so this is how they try to merge all these different Opinions. Now, what about the opinion of not reading uh, Fatiha? I mean, not reading Fatiha behind the Imam. So, about this opinion, uh, the, which is the Hanafi opinion. So, I'm going to uh, uh, come with the Hanafi opinion from different perspectives to give you an idea of that perspective. And then now I will ask you in the comment section, tell me whose opinion do you think sounds more reasonable? Now remember, I have not given an exhaustive proofs from any one side, right? I've only given you a certain logic so you can understand that majority of the times the school of thoughts, whether they're Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki, they're not without any basis from Quran and Sunnah. They have a logic that they apply in how they understand the text. This is what I want people to understand that that there is a, a reasoning that a school of thought comes with in how to apply the text, right? It's not just that there's a hadith, but how do you understand that hadith? So the Hanafi opinion is based upon the riwayah of uh, Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anh, in which he said that when I am individual, 
I pray the Fatiha, and when I'm in a Jama'ah, uh, I don't pray the Fatiha, because the Fatiha of the Imam is the Fatiha of the people behind the Imam. The further proof of this is, if you as an individual do not pray Fatiha, and you join the Jama'ah, and you come into the Ruku, or into the Samiyallahu, the Qiyam of Samiyallahu Liman Hamidah, you join the prayers after Fatiha, your Fatiha is counted because why? Because la salata illa bi fatiha. There's no prayer without fatiha. So if there's no prayer without fatiha, that's an understood and accepted fact. But how that that is applied is where the debate takes place. And so why, if there's no salah without fatiha, then you have to say that a person cannot join the salah in ruku and after the ruku before going to sujood. Otherwise, it wouldn't count as, as a count as a ruku, but it is counted as a ruku because the fatiha is accepted, and the fatiha is accepted because the imam read it, and because the imam read it, therefore, if somebody joins in the ruku, it is as good as the imam has read the fatiha. Okay, so now, which opinion do you think sounds stronger? There's also other riwayat and many other riwayat on the Hanafi side of the school of thought. And uh, so this is what I want to make clear to you right now, is that it's not just about the text, but it is about how do you understand that text? How do you put the different ayat and verses together? So one opinion is, la salata illa bi fatiha. You have to read fatiha in every rakah. So whether the imam is reciting out loud, you still have to read Fatiha. If the imam is not reciting Fatiha, you still have to read Fatiha. This is one opinion. The second opinion is, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ When the Qur'an is recited, you have to listen. And this is the opinion of Imam Malik. When the imam recites Fatiha, be quiet, listen to it. When, you're, when the imam is not reciting out loud, then in those times you can recite Fatiha. The third opinion is, uh, the third opinion, which is the opinion based upon Abdullah bin Umar and other companions of the Prophet, which is that obviously you, the Imam's Fatiha is your Fatiha, which is that if you go into Ruku, your Fatiha is, his Fatiha is accepted as your Fatiha. So which of these opinions do you agree with? And which of these opinions do you think is more logical? And if I did a reasonable job, because again, I'm not giving exhaustive proof because that would be a little bit, uh, you know, dry uh, subject, but I've given you the nutshell from each of the groups, okay, which is, these are the three opinions. Now, how do you apply that again becomes difference of opinion. Imam Shafi says, after all, I mean, the Imam should wait for the person to finish Fatiha and then start the Surah. The Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal says, no, he should give time after the imam, it, once the Imam recites Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, then the Imam should give time to the, to the Muqtadi people behind the Imam to read that much of an ayah. So this is the other opinion. So the, it's not just always a debate about, oh, the Prophet said this. But there's sometimes a debate about how do you apply this as a legal verdict and how do you understand this in the entire context of the things. So my, my hope is that uh, this clarifies for you that from the very beginning, from Fatiha, even from Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the ayah of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, there are difference of opinions, and the difference of opinion regarding Fatiha should teach us something about difference of opinions in Islam, because it is the most basic thing. And it is a necessary thing to understand that other people also have their proofs and their reasonings, and they're usually more strong than we think. And when you look at things from their perspective, uh, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to try to put yourself in a position where the different, the valid fiqhi differences. Now, what is a valid fiqhi difference? A valid fiqhi difference is a difference of opinion in fiqhi issues that has traditional sources, has dalail from Quran and Sunnah, but how they understand that. For example, in this case, Everyone agrees, la salata illa bi fatiha. There's no salah without fatiha. Everyone agrees upon this principle, but how will you apply this principle? There's a difference of opinion. So now, this is what I want you to understand. So, in the comment section, tell me, who do you agree with? Imam Malik, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, or the, uh, the, the, the Salafi brothers, who say you have to read fatiha in every rakah? Or you should only read Salah uh, Fatiha when the Imam is not reciting out loud. Or the opinion that 
you should not recite Fatiha, whether the, the Imam is out loud or not, because his Fatiha is your Fatiha. And I want you to try to guess what do you think my opinion would be on this issue. Okay, anyway, having said that, Jazakumullah khairan. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us inshrahu sadr and uh, uh, you know, Allah give us tawfiq to understand his deen and to understand the broadness of the deen and that how Islam came according to human nature and even the human nature of having difference of opinions and, and, and still getting along. Okay? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa